And another thing I do when I start these is I'll do the intro and then I'll do a pause, but we don't have to worry about that because I can always just pause the video, like now. Perfect. Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. I'm Matthew, obviously, and this is Aaron, one of my pastors. And uh, growing up as a Baptist, Southern Baptist Church, you have no idea the feelings that that puts in me. <laughs> <laughs> of having a beer with one of your pastors? Having a beer with one of my pastors. It's, I don't know, did you grow up Baptist or were you? I grew up a non denom guy, uh-huh. but it felt Baptist, so this is equally uncomfortable for me to be a pastor and reviewing a beer for the whole world to see but uh you won't be able to hide it now you know all things are permissible right yes and what does deuteronomy 14 say um you know if you can't bring your goods to to the temple to celebrate sell what you have and bring the money and buy uh it lists several things including strong drink Oh, and I celebrate yeah and it's deuteronomy 14 verse 20 something and celebrate to me and it's being great with strong God. drink yeah with strong you know, drink specifically i believe god makes all good things and in moderation we shall enjoy perfect the moderation today is a pilsner recommended to me by a friend of mine an old friend of mine from the old country um california um, his favorite Pilsner, he told me two weeks ago, was Scrimshaw by North Coast. Um, North Coast is a pretty well-known brand. They make the uh, Old Rasputin um, okay. Imperial Stout, which is widely regarded as an excellent beer. Um, Pilsners are a pale malt beer, or a paler beer, uh, originating from, I believe, the Czech Republic. Pilsner Urkel is kind of the Ur Pilsner. And I believe the Pilsner is actually named for the hop. I want to say the Pils, the Pilsen hop okay. is what yeah. defines the Pilsner style. Uh, this appears to be a very classically made Pilsner in that they even list the ingredients, water, malted barley, hops, and yeast. And explicitly, that's all on well, the ingredients. What would like the alcohol percentage of a beer like this be, you think? Like 4 or 5%? <laughs> Ranging from four to six okay. is what I would expect. Um, and I believe this is probably about five. Five and a half. But, like um, I'm not actually seeing it on the label, which is surprising. Um, it might have been on the box. Probably on the box. Okay. Um, Great. But yeah, it's going to be a, a pretty mid range. This is what you would describe as crushable. Uh, We're going to crush a beer? <laughs> crush it. I don't know right. what that, like, how that ties in, but. That's what it is. It reminds me of like, you know, someone at a cake party and, you know, we're going to crush this beer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, we're not. I've never not been to a cake, by the way. <laughs> Although there's a cake at my wedding, but I was in Bible college and wasn't allowed to partake at my Oh, that's wedding. hilarious. Yeah. Your that... family pay for that or something? Yeah, or... my parents did because they invited all their friends from work and. And the friends uh, expected to There was pay. like wine and beer, but me and my wife didn't drink <laughs> at her own wedding. My wife was 19 when we got married, too. Um, okay, yeah. But I think if you're like married, you're allowed to drink, right? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, my wife attended Moody, and I remember that was one of the questions. But I think it was if you were living off campus, uh, the, the well, rules were different for I you. I won't lie, we broke that rule a few times. But uh, I was like, <laughs> legally, like if you're married, you might oh. not be able to buy alcohol, but you can drink. Oh it though, no, the right? the rule is you can only buy alcohol if you're over 21. Um, you can actually drink it whenever your family lets you. Huh. Like I believe. There might be some states that that explicitly stay like fourteen or fifteen or sixteen, mm-hmm. but it's it's literally in most places it is whenever your parents allow. So it's you. mostly just you can't buy alcohol. Correct. Ah, good to know. You cannot sell alcohol to minors. Um, but let's crack these open and yeah, uh, I'm excited. See what they're all about. And just for all of our viewers, I, I've been you know been asking Matt for a few months like what what am I going to finally get the honor review a beer with you and so to to get the, the text message to, to get like the actual invite was a was a big deal Aww. i hope i'm not like okay ours looks about the same hey i nice did a good pour. job all right nice yeah, pour i got pour. i got the nice pour yeah, good good pour there Aaron. what do you see there what do you like about it so yeah it, it, it looks like a pretty light beer on, on the mm-hmm. surface like honestly 
I'm a big golfer, and so, you know, we're golfing, and, and usually on a hot summer day, you're just looking for a hydration beer. You're looking for just like a mm-hmm. Coors Light, maybe a Miller. Oh, yeah. Uh, so on the surface, it reminds me, like, if someone handed me this, I'm like, oh, is this like a Miller or a Coors Light? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I always like these lighter beers, because um, to be honest with you, it might just be more of a texture thing, but like when someone hands me a Guinness, I just feel like you're asking me to like <laughs> to drink chew. motor oil. <laughs> And, and this is what I feel like a beer should look like, personally. Good thing I didn't bring out the Belgian double today. Yeah, no, I just I just can't do it, you know? Like, you weirdos who want your beer to be like a milkshake, I don't, I don't get it. But um, So I am pleased so far with what I'm seeing. You know, a good amount of, you know, bubbles coming up and mm-hmm. nice little foam on top. I believe the technical term we have for that is the head. The head, the, yes. Yeah. I did know that, actually. Um, I am noticing it's to the light side of honey. There's a tinge of amber it's not just yellow not just gold um it's kind of to the just to the light side of honey the bubbles are a little bit rocky um rocky it means there's uh variation in the size of the bubbles okay which according to beer experts will indicate um there's a craft level to the to the manufacturer of the beer as in there's still some variation it's not oh, super perfected uh, like a major it's not macro like completely beer, like, scientific or some art involved there's, in it there's some art great involved okay in that. Yeah. i like to hear that yeah me too what are you smelling honestly can i just be honest the, the, the thing when i smell this it just smells delicious mm-hmm. like i'm just really like my, i'm kind of like salivating right now like i just want to drink it um the right kind of beer then it smells I, maybe a little it smells like a Hefeweizen. Oh, interesting. How many Hefeweizens have you had, and could you name the brands that you've had? Um, so the, the the most I've had is, like, there's that brewery up in Seattle. We go to, a, like, a Mariners game in Pyramid right there. Oh, Pyramid, yeah. Okay, um, they have some nice Hefs. Yeah, so I get the Hefeweizen there. And then I don't know. Usually if I ever see a, any kind of Hefeweizen on tap somewhere is... um. What's my favorite beer? Um, Mac and Jack? Is that a happen Oh, uh, their, their standard is the African Amber. African Amber. Now, that's a great amber. beer. That is a good that's beer. That's a good yes. beer. On tap? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, so, I don't know. Not maybe yeah. not too many, but enough happen Wisens, you know? I'm going to say, to me, this smells like a beer. So which like is beer. weird for the nerd to say. Yeah. But when you think of, you know, what did your granddad's beer smell like? Well, my granddad probably drank Coors um but I, I don't recall that he ever had a Pilsner that I recall but, um but it smells that that combination of malt alcohol yeast top it's just it's a it's a very middle of the road so I'll tell you like my first Cubs game ever I went to and I was 18 years old and my first memory of Wrigley Field was I was in the middle of this huge section and all I heard the entire game was hey beer guy hey beer guy hey beer <laughs> And they would literally pour these beers, mm-hmm. and they would just start passing them down. They're like, "Hey, pass this down." So like half the game, I'm like <laughs> passing people's beers because the, like the beer guy was so in between the rows, it's all tight. And I, I just remember like this is what it smells like. It smells like beer at a baseball game, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, and this want, is probably oh, the perfect kind of beer to have at a baseball yeah, game too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Are we, are we gonna drink it a little bit here? Yeah. Sure. Let's dive in. What do you? What if I just chugged this beer as a pastor? Just like slammed it, crushed it. I think I didn't do a spit take there. Mm. I'm sorry. I made a joke right when you drink a drink. <laughs> I am picking up. Um, there's mm. almost like a, a dry, unsweetened graham cracker. If you're trying to imagine something, um, that's the maltiness. It's, it's, um, I think of kind of the, the grain flavor and texture in graham cracker without the sweetness, if you can. It might take some imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. I'm trying to also picture if you're looking at malts, the, the the flavors the grains bring in, the malty flavors that ranges from super dry like a like a saltine an, an unsalted saltine yeah. to um, you know moist and rich like a like a super sweet bread to dark like a rye bread or something like that. So there's different ranges in there. Okay, and I'm thinking so it's kind of between the breads and the saltines. It's definitely not sweet, but there's a there's a earthiness I think to it, without being thick. You know, I'm gonna take more sip here. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just keep thinking like hot dog bun. 
Okay. But because maybe that's just because I'm mm-hmm. used to like always having a beer with a hot dog. I don't know. Okay. Um, to be honest, what this beer reminds me of, it reminds me of like a pretty decent day on the golf course. Like I'm going to say like when I shoot an 82, this is what that tastes like. Um, yeah. Where like that's like a commendable round. Like you didn't okay. break 80 and it's not going to be like your best day. But it's a day where you're like, you know what? I, I went out there and I'm a golfer, you mm-hmm. know, and those are the vibes. Is, yeah. is that is that a proper beer term? Vibes yeah. that I, I'm getting. Yeah. Maybe for some of you, like who play pickleball, like this is like winning <laughs> eleven to four. You know, like maybe if you're a big gamer, like this is like you having that perfect amount of time where you played and you had fun, but you didn't also waste your day mm-hmm. playing so much, or you don't feel this guilt. A solid A minus. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, those, those are the vibes I'm picking up. Um, there are days that this is the perfect beer for. Definitely summer. Definitely summer. Yeah, it's maybe, definitely so. Maybe late spring. But. Yeah, anytime it's warmer, yeah. you want the sun out. It is going to be very refreshing on a warm, sunny day. Um, but I think there's also enough to it. Like, it's not forgettable. You, you, you drink it and you're not moving on to the next thing in the next uh, breath. You're still, yeah. there's a little bit of. Um, la- it, it takes uh, yeah, a bit it for it to stays fade. in the palate on the, for a while. I would definitely say, although it looked at first like a light beer, it 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 definitely does not, you know, go down like a light beer. You know, like this. this yeah, it, it's a almost a pleasant aftertaste too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I totally hear what you're saying there. Yeah, there's there's a there's a bit of sweetness. I think maybe what I was tasting at the beginning and I was trying to describe as between the saltine and the bread is kind of an, a light earthiness. Okay. Um, so kind of a light earthiness. It's a very, the hops are very um, consistent. They're not, they're not playing multiple flavors throughout. It's a pretty consistent, just light bite throughout from the hops. And uh, that kind of even continues into the finish where you have this herbal um, bitterness on your palate but you also have this really clean like water finish it's it's not like you're leaving the malt on your palate you're leaving just the hops on your palate i would definitely say i taste that herbal bitterness um and i would say like if you struggled with drinking ipas this may be a beer that can Mm -hmm. like kind of work up to that a little bit like my wife doesn't like ipas and Mm -hmm. but I, i have learned you know i think drinking pilsners to like I thought I didn't like IPAs, but then, you know, every once in a while someone gives me one, I'm like, I really enjoy this. Although there's still some IPAs, I'm like, why did you make this? How was this selling? But I digress. Um, you know, Pale ales would be another another kind of bridge. Yeah, like pale that. ale, totally. Yeah. Um, how many different types of beers are there? As many as you want to imagine. Um, I mean, if you're thinking about it in a rainbow, because largely beers fall within the color of the beer and then the levels of hoppiness mm. applied to them. But there's even variation within that because there's also the yeast and yeast sometimes is a bit of an unsung, unsung yeah. hero. Yeah. Um, but in some beers like um, the, the Belgian wit beer, uh, the yeast is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Um, that funky kind of sweet, weird clove and farmhouse smell. Um, it's all from the yeast. So there's there's a lot of variation, but uh, as far as a number, I couldn't even begin to give you a number. Um, the books that describe styles of beers usually have at least hundreds of pages and contain a lot of caveats that they artificially limited the number that they talked about. Um, this is definitely falling within the pale ale category. I believe it is an ale. Okay. All right, Pilsners are ales? I don't think Pilsners are lagers. You tell me. Oh, that's going to bug me now. I should know this. Also, this, this is brewed in Fort Bragg. <laughs> and if you want to put down in the comments where Fort Bragg is, that'd be cool. I'm pretty sure the second person to watch this lives within 100 miles of Fort Bragg. Second person to watch it? Probably. Oh, okay. My old Sunday school teacher. Oh. <laughs> hey, Jim. Sunday school teachers for the win. <laughs> so I'm curious, mm-hmm. um, what is your favorite... I guess like micro brew that's like well known. Mm. Oh, well known. Okay, a well known. My favorite well known. You know, there's always micro brews that go. Brew. Yeah, craft yeah, brew. Yeah, craft beer. Um. Oh goodness. See, that's actually a question I ask myself. I want a beer 
that I can have on my shelf all the time. I also like experimenting, but I like to have ones that I can have on my shelf all the time. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, is the ones that are rate really high are kind of niche and not as well known. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that one. Okay. What about yours? Um, don't hate me. I'll try. I like Blue Moon. Sue me. I like what you I like. You said microbrew. Sorry, that doesn't count. Well, because it started as a microbrew at one point, <laughs> it right? It did, yeah. Yeah, then it well, just got really famous. It's a Belton Wood beer. A well-known microbrew. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like the citrusy types of beers. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so those do it for me. At the same time, as much as I love beer, I sometimes am a little suspicious of all like the microbrewery culture and mm -hmm. everyone's trying to start up with their own little new like i don't know like it seems like maybe you perfect what you have yeah it seems yeah. too trendy um what's like the 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 oregon brewery that's pretty well known they actually have some uh, there's breweries. full sale there's freem there's um pelican um well further south i think oh, uh, further south and sisters or something with Swiss and sisters um I'm not sure. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, yeah. one other story I had, my first Pilsner, I remember actually, I don't know if you remember, but I remember the first time I ever had a Pilsner beer. I was living in Chicago, and I, I think I just finished up college, and I, I worked in the city of Chicago as a as a valet, so I worked for different mm. restaurants, and usually they're high-end restaurants, but there was this microbrewery okay. that came in in uh, the West Loop area randolph street and it was very trendy apex brewing uh no i yeah. didn't know the name of it anymore okay. um i met a i met a, a few blackhawks players though at oh, this oh, place cool. okay now here's the thing when you have valet for a restaurant mm -hmm. that makes sense but typically most people in the city they don't like driving to the bar mm -mm. Because drinking and driving is really bad, right? And Chicago has pretty decent yeah, public transit. Yeah, there's public transit, you know, yeah. Uber and uh, taxis and all that stuff. So anyways, they they take on this account, my company, and, you know, I get stationed there and I park like two cars and I go home early and I was like, hey, you know, like it's 7.45 on a Thursday and yeah, microbrew, like let's, let's go check it out. And I, and I walk in and I have to take my valet shirt off so that people don't think I'm like, parking mm -hmm. people's cars and drinking at the bar you know <laughs> um things and i mean and sometimes again maybe the reason why i don't like all these microbreweries is i get intimidated mm -hmm. there's like a million beers on the wall have you ever been to yard house no they have a hundred beers on tap good like wow. it just seems like yeah okay anyways so this guy's like what do you want i'm like beer and i just turned like 21 like i don't know uh, -huh. uh he's like how about a pilsner yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted a Pilsner. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I really liked it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and from then on, I kind of just found my niche. I'm like, you know, I could do some ambers and kind of get some mm -hmm. darker browns. You know, I tried all the dark and Guinness's ones and no. Um, and, and this is about the beer I'll that I've, I've kind of like landed on is, is this type mm -hmm. of beer right here, you know? And my What about warm weather or cold weather, though? You just put up so, a beer. So, like every once in a while, I'll get like a six pack of like a Sam Adams Fall. Mm. You okay. know, um, I almost went to the Sam Adams Brewery once when I was in Boston, but my wife didn't want to go, so I didn't go. <laughs> okay. But I just thought it'd be cool to watch. And oh, every time so. I go to the Ram, sometimes like, not every time, but sometimes I go and I'll say, "Hey, can you show me around like how you brew it?" And they'll like take you through and show oh, you all wow. their hops, and it's actually kind of cool. If, if it's a ram where they actually brew their beer, which most they do, but they'll give you a little tour of their brewery and they'll. That's cool. So I've done that a few times. Yeah. Um, they're all kind of snooty though. I don't huh. know the yeah. science of it all. But <laughs> so that that was my first pilsner back in Chicago. We're gonna circa you know two thousand and eleven maybe. Huh. So eleven years ago. And... My first ever was Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. That was, well, that was my first beer. Period was the oh. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Um, and I did not like it. I was going to say, that would be a hard first beer. Yeah. I think the reason why I still like Blue Moon so much is because that was the beer I, I kind of learned to drink. Uh-huh. Also, Corona, too, Corona yeah. with Lime was... Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. It's, it's a big summer beer. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about my favorite... So, my favorite accessible uh, craft beer 
since we just came off summer, if you had to ask me to bring a beer to a party and name it off the top of my head, I would say the Fremont Summer Ale. Okay. The Fremont Summer Ale is a wheat beer that I've described as tasting like someone was told to make lemonade for grown-ups. Not adult lemonade, not spiked hard lemonade. Like hard lemonade or nothing like that? No, nothing no, no. super candy alcohol like that. But how do you make uh, an adult lemonade? It's I mean, light, refreshing, acidic, bright, but still a wheat beer, so it's super drinkable. You sold me on smooth. it. Like, I love how you're describing it's it. Great beer. Could I get this at Fred Meyer? You can get it at Costco. Costco. Like, all the time. And I Costco. assume you can get it at Fred Meyer, too. But it's from Fremont, so it's a, it's a Seattle brewery that, that distributes pretty widely. Fremont is in Seattle. I don't know how far away you can get Fremont's, but most places. Mm-hmm. So here, here's maybe a sacrilege question for you. Um, do you think Jesus... Like, would have liked lighter or darker beers? Oh, he would have only been drinking super dank, um, uh, like, chunky soup beers. Because that's what they made back then. Well, you, you know what I meant, though. Like, if he no, was here yeah, and now, he's though, here and now, you know. You know, kind of a, a man of the land, working with the hands, a, a man tradesman. Of the land. Salt of the earth, right? Salt Jesus. of the earth. Yeah, I mean, he was a tradesman. He hung out with tradespeople a lot. Yes. He hung out with your fishermen, man. With those are bunch like of fishermen, yeah. Rough and tough guys. So right? those are ambers. Those are those are the mid range beers. It, it could be. It's definitely not going to be Bud Light. It's not. It's, it's not. not gonna be, thinking, it's not gonna be a light beer. I was thinking you're gonna leave with Bush Light. I'm like, I don't know, man. No, I don't not, know if I not, wanna. She's not a natty light dude. <laughs> Jesus was not a natty light dude. You heard it here first. <laughs> heard it first. <laughs> but he, it's he gonna, was like some amber. Okay, some kind of. I, I think he probably started like the lowest he'd go would be a Coors or a Sam Adams. Not to equate Coors and Sam Adams, except Coors Banquet is really actually good. You know, and Sam Adams is really good. But those but years where he was an itinerant with, preacher and didn't have a lot of money coming in. Didn't want to waste all the, you know, offerings. Coors Probably Banquet. Like Coors Banquet. <laughs> my brother likes to have beer a lot, Coors Banquet. My older I brother, fridge. shouts out to you, he always calls uh, Rainier. He's like, would you like a Rania? A, a Rania. Rania. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pinky up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rania. Oh, uh, yeah. So, okay, no, yeah. that's good. How about the Apostle Paul? What do you think about him? Oh, the Apostle Paul was an IPA guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he he was he was a hipster before it was cool, but he was sincere, not ironic. Okay, another another historical figure here. Um, Abraham Lincoln. What's he drinking? Oh, oh. Um, initial thought is I think he's a pale ale guy. Okay. Uh, he's he's sincere and simple. Sincere and simple. Okay. One more. Okay. This okay. is fun to me. Um, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. I'm sure we could probably find this out. You know, yeah. ask somebody who knew him. I mean, right, like your best guess. So you're thinking playful, artistic, a bit of a misunderstood genius, misguided, and really confused all at the same time. Wow. Um, he would probably really enjoy something crazy like a uh, super aged Saison or something like that, which is getting into farmhouse um, wine like kind of characteristics but mm -hmm. i would guess that he's probably also not looking to think very hard when he's drinking his beer and so he's looking for something like if he were to pick it would probably be something simpler okay it's probably something as to the far end of like bud light bud light yeah i i don't know what, what the lights I, I i prefer miller light over Bud Light. I don't I know. Never actually had Miller or Coors Light. I really? only I had Bud Light a long time ago. You know. Um, Sam Adams Light is actually a decent light beer. Like for Sam light, Adams Light? Yeah. It's I haven't actually, read that either. Okay. It has flavor. All right. So one more question. Back, back, back to the beer that we're <laughs> reviewing today. I apologize <laughs> for those obscene questions. But um, what food would you want to drink this beer with? Um, it has enough flavor. It could stand up to... Uh, German bar food. Mm -hmm. it, it could go as far as a schnitzel. Okay. Um, but more likely, I'd probably be drinking it with some sort of savory um, sandwich. I, yeah. I, I, st I still stand by my hot dog thing earlier. Yeah. Good baseball game. Um, 
You could do it with brats fry. and the dog. Brats and... would be good. Yeah. yeah. Um, it has enough bite. It'll cut the it'll cut the fat. Yes. So absolutely. it can handle a cut a fatty sandwich. But I, I don't know if I would like have a really nice dinner and have this beer with it. I mean, any beer with dinner is nice. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, what would be a really nice dinner for you? Is that fish or is that steak or? Is I'm that... thinking. I was thinking like a nice steak dinner. Um, that is that is typically where I do want a little bit more of that like strong IPA. Uh, really, an yeah. IPA even. Yeah. What about other strong beers like a Belgian or a? Um... Like wh- wh- where would you like rank like a fat tire? Well, fat tire is a Belgian. Yeah, like, Belgian. Yeah, how strong um... is that? Like. I can see something. Is that like a Belgian that. double? No, it's not a double. I think it's just a Belgian style ale. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I, I can lean towards one of mm-hmm. those. Now, here's something that I just don't like and call me weird, and I, I think the people who drink these and don't drink other beer are weird. But the big cider people, I mean, every once in a while, a cider, mm-hmm. okay. But I would rather just have a beer at this point. If I'm going to drink alcohol, like I don't know. I just feel like the cider scene has just blown up a little too much, and we're coming into that season where everyone's <laughs> into it. And I'm it's like cider. The pumpkin uh, spice of beers. Oh, wait. There already is pumpkin spice beer. <laughs> now, I had an interesting... I, I would be similar. There are good ciders, but generally, if I have a choice between a beer and a cider, I'm picking a beer. Yep. But cider is gluten-free. And there is so much gluten-free beer out there that is patently offensive. I know. I've tried <laughs> ten of them. Patently offensive. Okay. Horribly... Well, nine of them. Um, horribly. Just... They're, they're not worth drinking. Um, I found one. I just posted the video. Uh, it just went up yesterday, I think. Uh, so it'll be two weeks ago or so when I post this. Um, it's a Spanish beer, Dara by Dam Brewing. And that is actually a good beer that is gluten free. But in general, if you want something that is truer to form, less offensive, and still gluten free, you're looking at cider. Mm-hmm. And so I was talking with a, a friend of mine who's celiac or an acquaintance, and he said, his, his target is he wants a cider that's super dry to be more like a beer. Okay. But he has a hard time finding super, super dry ciders. So many ciders are made accessible and less sweet these days. Well, I mean, I can totally get it from someone who's a silly, you mm-hmm. know, but I don't know. I, I still feel like yeah, I, I We have the choice. So if you have a beer on your face, drink a beer. <laughs> drink a beer. Drink a beer. Drink a beer. And on that note... This has been North Coast Brewing's Scrimshaw Pilsner. Thanks to um, Daniel for the suggestion. My friend Aaron, Pastor Aaron. And we will catch y'all on the flip side.